Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to the most exciting, the most 4K. Okay, it probably doesn't even look that good. The most 4K uh, Four Lakes game you've ever seen, at least for those of you that are watching on YouTube, because yes, all my recordings will now be in 4K. We're going to be making a lot of changes still, trying to figure out some things. So nothing is a finished product right now, including the microphone. However, happy to make some changes that can make the content more entertaining. We have two Brazilian players playing each other right now, and they're both pretty much of the same ELO. Uh, Martelo de Guerra is actually Gabby. Uh, at least that's what the dashboard's telling me. Gabby is the best female player in the scene by far. Uh, and around 2,200 ELO. So she's like close to that top 100. She's a beast. She's playing as the Slavs here. Always a little awkward when you play with the farm civilization on a water map. Uh, or at least a map that incorporates water. But then also... Oops, sorry. Ba just banged my mic. But then also... Uh, Bra is playing with a civilization that has some farm bonuses too with the Sicilians. Uh, Bra is a player who won't perform in or play in that many tournaments anymore, as far as I know, because he's working with like Forgotten Empires. Um, I think if you do that, you can't participate in Microsoft sponsored tournaments, which is the majority of the tourneys we have. But I actually had the pleasure of meeting him in Heidelberg. He's a really cool guy. Uh, and it really good for the game, obviously, that he's involved with uh, in, in whatever capacity working on it. And again, he's playing as the Sicilians. So, um, you know, Four Lakes is the map that's designed around fish. And uh, we, there's quite a bit of fish here in these little lakes. Or not so little lakes, I suppose. Typically, you're going to see players dock. So we'll see villagers heading over that direction soon. And then eventually, it's, like a, it's all about finding that balance. And that balance is not easy. Uh, sometimes you want to full commit to water. Sometimes you'll see a transition into land. And that's not just with Navy or Army. That's also with your economy, too. So if you like a map that's always a little bit different, Four Lakes is probably that map. And Gabby's just trying to push in some Zebra at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to see Donjon rushing here from the uh, Sicilians. It's unlikely we're going to see Sergeant play at least early. I could see both players going into Scouts, though. I'm trying to think. Uh, Sicilians used to have a water bonus. And I'm trying to remember what it is. Is it a transport bonus? Yeah, I think it's a transport bonus. They used to get a transport ship for free when their dock was built or something crazy. And they changed that because that was wild. I think now transport ships are maybe cheaper. Or maybe it's still free. I don't know if it's free or like half off or something like that. Um, transport plus 10. Okay, so it's a transport bonus. I don't think we're going to see that utilized here. But at least I'm not too crazy. I think the extra armor on transport, Svarland, is... Uh, I think that's Saracens. Saracens have extra armor on their transport, which is a very random bonus for Saracens to have, by the way. <laughs> but Saracens are like full of random bonuses. A transport bonus, archers destroy buildings faster, market is cheaper and have a better rate, and then they also have camel bonuses. Saracens are like super random. Oh, God. Oh, man. Okay, bro almost lost his scout. That could be a big deal going forward. Ah, extra line of sight and cheaper transports. All right, cool. Well, I like the direction the devs went with it. Um, again, we won't see transports really get much value here. And man, look at how Gabby's playing this. This is like both so smart, but also so greedy at the same time. So Bruh has a weak scout. And he has scouted where his opponent has docked. Now, one of the strats you can do on this map is you can try and sneak a villager to dock their side. And so Gabby is like, I'm not even going to scout him. I'd need to, I'm assuming he's going to come forward to my base. And I'm just going to have my scout on patrol here waiting for it. Really smart thinking. But we'll see if a villager does actually head forward here for bro. At the moment, doesn't look like it. And then we're going to see Gabby wall in towards the TC on every side. So really, really safe play. Taking zero risks here. Yeah, Saracens could be split up into several civs. However, don't say that because then the devs will get ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and then we'll have to deal with something like the Gurjaras, Hindustanis, and Poles for, for seven months without a change. That's not true. There's been changes. I just... Getting a little sick of some of those sieves. Which is why I'm enjoying the ladder games right now. I enjoy the random sieve. Listen, I'm a tourney guy. I play tourneys. I host tons of tourneys. I appreciate what it does for the player base in the scene. But sometimes, man, and maybe I'm going to do it more frequently, actually. I just love to sit down and cast ranked games. No money on the line. No, no repeat, the same 15, 20 civilizations, which can be beautiful, which can be awesome, but sometimes just isn't. I love ranked games because like ranked games can be sloppier. There can be more variety. I don't know. It's interesting. What's up with the pathing on this lady? I'm pretty sure they were here. Wait, hold on. Let me, can I go back real quick? Okay. So they're right here. Bro hits feudal. And he says, build an archery range there. <laughs> what? What is the pathing? <laughs> that pathing was horrible <laughs> for both bills. That was really weird. Uh, anyways, the archery range is on the way up. It's not a big deal. And it is going to be rather tough, though, I think, for Bro, because of how Gabby's played this. And Gabby still hasn't found the opponent. And we're going to have a galley do the job on this side. So that this is smart thinking. You're never going to lose your fish now. And now I think you should add more fish after this. So it's just going to be archers. Bro, obviously a little paranoid. Probably sent the scout over, checked for it. Also sent the fishing ship, checking for a sneaky dock. Sending another fishing ship, checking for the sneaky dock. Something that's showing Bro's experience on this map, though, is that he's adding more fish in now that he knows his dock is, uh, is uh, safe. But I guess Gabby didn't want to do that yet. Do you know that Red's name translates to Warhammer? I saw somebody else said that before. Uh, I just didn't respond to it, so yes. I'm just really bad at responding to people. I'm sure that's worse in many ways. Um, I don't know much about Warhammer, though. Surprise, surprise. All right, so let's see what direction the scouts go for red. You're kind of noticing, right? This scout goes down to check the pond. This scout goes over to check the pond. So that's the approach. Even with a good farming civilization, we don't even have a mill yet, which unlocks the farms. I like how the archers are still being masked. I mean, it, moving out with them would be a little risky here. I really like that approach. But I'm also really enjoying the approach here from Gabby. And Gabby's going to find this vill. Now, last time I played Bro, his quick walling skills needed a little work. Let's see. Um. Oh! The dock needs... The dock's the next part, though. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, certainly I feel like the villager should have gone down regardless. It would have been really hard there to save that. And look at the wood count for both of them. They can't spend it fast enough on this fish. But we've got two docks for Gabby. And I think that's actually the first time Bro knew there was going to be multiple scouts out. Because he probably wanted to be nowhere near the base. He's going to just sit behind the wood line now, which is kind of annoying, though. Okay, here comes a villager here. So it's going to be three ponds versus one. However, the one here has nine fishing ships now. And if you look at the resources collected, it's pretty even. Not bad, not bad. The scouts are going to be making their way this direction. There's still a gap here, but bro's walling towards it. And... Oh my goodness, that was so close. And yeah, the spearmen will be fine to deal with this. And bro should realize there's no reason to panic. Might, might be tempted, though, to sneak the villager down. Like, you could just delete one of these housing foundations and try and get your dock up there. Especially because you know that your opponent knows you're there. So they might have already, they might have had the scouts there, cleared it up, and then be thinking, hey, wait, wait a moment. I'm going to take that for myself. Uh, how do you decide if you should small wall or full wall? It honestly comes down to what type of army your opponent's making and if you feel like you can deal with it and when. Um, if, also, if you're making army, sometimes it's better to small wall because it's easier for you to just focus on fighting instead of having to focus on the full walls. 
where you're exposed. So what I'm trying to say is, it depends. A couple skirmishes on the way here for Gabby. Gabby has added a galley in every single lake that's been secured. Do you guys like that or do you guys hate that? I like it. It's like extra safe. I think players who would fish immediately upon taking the pond would be Castlage, on the way to Castlage already. But it's going to allow you to hold the pond for much longer. Yeah, Survivalist knows how to wall, that's for sure. I can tell you that. I haven't played the guy. Castlage on the way here for Bro. Remember, Sicilian TCs also build a bit faster. So that's something that could be valuable for Bro. Not to mention that even though there's going to be more food eco for, for uh, Gabby, the archer count is really high for Bro right now. And there's not much to counter that if they become crossbowmen. So I like this map because you have pros and cons. Pros and cons. Uh, what about the the next choice here? We're going to see another archery range. All right, so it's going to be full crossbow. And this archer should be saved. Yep, should be. Should be. Yep, it is. And now, oh my goodness, the wood situation. Oh, God. These situations suck. I think I would go full knights. You don't have enough range units to really, like, catch up now. Uh, example A, as that... Uh, that Spearman takes out the skirm. I think you just have to drop the stables and hope for the best. Oh, I didn't see this woodline. Okay, so this woodline kind of saves Gabby. Am I bad for going insane over small walling berries? I off I often know I should, but dot dot dot. I mean, are you saying you don't do it and then you lose units? Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. Rewind. Excuse me? Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, Gabby needs some advice on walling. Oh, oh, that's a deceiving one. I blame the grass, by the way. I really think the grass is a problem. They try and make the terrain look all nice and cool. But by the way, even though we when we were like testing to get like audio quality, you know what makes things fuzzy when you're watching Age of Empires 2? You know what like really affects the quality? The grass. So I think me and PC guy and Gabby think the grass should be removed. There is actually a no grass mod. And the archers are going to run right in at the worst possible time. Ouch. You know, it looks like she might have had a wall piece there in the past, to be completely honest with you. We'll have to review this. But Gabby forced into a tower. Gabby still has the lead, though. And Gabby's got tons of gold and will have tons of food with the fish. So, unfortunate, but the tower was actually the perfect response. The scouts will go down there, and this villager's like, uh, awkward. This villager also sneaking. So, what I'm enjoying about this game, guys, as bro has a lot to do at the moment. Um, You could tell bro's not looking at this one. Okay, walls and the spearmen. But what I'm enjoying about this game is, like, the way bro's trying to play it, is back to front, or I guess back to corner, you could say. And Gabby, like stayed stayed in the in the in the back in terms of like army military. But Gabby like took the pawns really early, and I was hoping to secure them with the galley move. And the galley really helped there, as that villager has to run away, and then push the mid. So you have like one player pushing mid and then trying to get corners. Other player already has corners, so it's going to go for middle control. It's really fascinating. I don't know if I explained myself there. <laughs> all that properly but anyways the crossbow army is not that big and Gabby's gonna have plus two armor on the knights and the food eco is awesome the problem is though Gabby didn't have the galley on the right side this was so smart from bro and do you really want to make two galleys I think you just have to say hats off to bro there for that one you've got to know man you've seen a siege workshop and you've seen two stables you've got to know that this is going to be a problem at some point but what are you going to do? I mean, it's full boom focus right now for the Brazilian. And, uh... Oh, Spearman on Villager. This is interesting. And, wow, great micro. Dang. I like how Gabby's now checking here, too. Yeah, this pond is locked down. Okay, Siege is cheap with the Slavs. So I like the Scorpion Edition even more. Would love a Mangano, personally. But I think if you're going Knights and Siege and you're defensive, 
uh, Scorpion's fine. If you're offensive, you always probably want the Mangonel. This always makes you feel so bad because you're like, oh man, like, are you kidding me? Especially when a new fishing ship comes out too. And now total villager count is 44 versus 40. And then the fishing ship count is not that big of a difference now. Very sneaky play there. Wow, holy... I mean, Gabby's really going crazy here with the army, guys. Oh, wow, and I completely missed this. Excuse me. There might have actually been another hole. And... The knights are going to attack the, uh, the house there. And I'm still not seeing the hole. It's not like they jumped over the tree there or anything. But anyways, that's what Bro's been up to. And now here comes Gabby. Oh, man. This is calling for another siege workshop. Another siege workshop would be amazing here. Hmm. Yeah, I still have the boo emote. Okay, was there a hole here? Now, maybe the gate opened or something. Sorry for missing that one, guys. New setup still feels... Uh, it doesn't feel like home, so... Still working on things. Yeah, things to look at right now are, are there monks out in the field to convert knights? The answer is soon. Next thing to look at is, uh, is there sea defensive siege as well? Which bro could maybe use to take out the scorpions? And the answer is no there. Also stone. Uh, the player who's defending from this type of push normally is going to want stone. Gabby's dropping a market but has so many knights. Full upgrades, bloodlines, husbandry, attack, defense. The crossbow shouldn't be able to do anything against this. But if you convert a knight, and you can use that knight against some of the siege in theory, that's the idea. But I, I just think, like, Gabby could just force fights constantly. Great job, though, with the knight there to take the scorpions. And it, like, should not matter. You do not have enough crossbows. That is too many knights. And then all your eco, your precious eco, is not even working. I think it's an underrated move in all-in situations. As long as you're producing more army, I think diving TCs is perfect. Look at all the eco that's idle. So even if your opponent had the eco lead, they wouldn't right now. And the only risk is if you lose your army. But, I mean, this is amazing. I think I think Bro's dead. This is such a good game from Gabby. And she'll be able to drop town centers too and eventually transition into farms. But, like, she has not played into farms on this map at all. She played into the ponds. She barely even took her berries. And yeah, man. Okay, so like you don't want to give up a conversion here if you're Gabby. But even still, the scorpion sitting here could be a big problem. The crossbows pop out. You could tell you're desperate when the crossbows have to go for the scorpions. Because that's not a position you want to be in at all. Holy scorpion, holy knights. Oh, holy... No, I won't do it. And she's just not stopping, man. I think if we were to look at resources collected right now, it would be way higher for Gabby. Monk's also going to get shot to the face with the Scorpion Bolt. Villagers are all going to go down. And Bro is slowly letting it sink in here that this game might be over. The villagers have to run, right? The knights are going to wait. And, okay, there you go. Into the TC you go, but there's not enough room for you. So the other villagers have to hop out on the other side. This is horrible. There's a town center. Now, sometimes it's hard to relax in these situations and breathe, you know, because you're, you're just being so aggressive all the time. Not the type of, of game where you're just going to casually place farms at home, but you want to get your farm upgrade. Probably feels like this game is close to over two, so that can help sometimes. It's just like the only way I lose this game is if I'm not doing this stuff. I probably will have to realize these villagers need a new wood line, and I'm sure she will. Another town center, too. We saw so many different things in this game, like, but and yet they all kind of tried to do the same type of thing, but at different times, which is what was good about it. They all tried to dock, but when they dock, when they prioritized docking and what they did with their docks was all very different. They've all dropped town centers, but the timing on the town centers and the position they're in when they dropped the town centers is all very different. We did have a difference in the type of army, of course. But I think it's fair to say that prioritizing, like, delaying the town centers and going for uh, the push here in Castle Age after the heavy prioritization of water and making the galleys, which made a big difference this game. 
Because Bro tried. Bro tried to dock the north. Bro tried to dock the south and eventually got there. I think that's been huge. Bro has been texted by one of his buddies who says, Hey, just letting you know T90's casting this. So he's probably like, Hey, um, you know, we don't want this to hit YouTube. Even though it's 4K now on YouTube. Uh, so we're just going to play on here and not accept that we're dead. And Gabby, obviously... It's still in a massive position here. Could go for the kill here, but it's just slowly creeping in. Well, she's probably heard the same thing, so she's for a different reason holding on. She's like, oh man, more airtime? Let's go, baby. Mama did it! I don't think that's what's happening at all, by the way. I think he's just super focused, and I'm being slightly disrespectful, but he knows me. We're good. Mm, horse collar. Yeah, this is where Gabby will start to mix in the farms. I don't know what these villas are doing right now. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I like how Gabby split up a couple nights and how much value has gotten here as the main army and the main force is massing. And if your opponent adds a mangonel, they're not going to be able to take out... They're not going to be able to use that to take out the scorpions here. These villagers are going to take the stone. Got it. I don't know, like, Bro doesn't really have an army. He's going to try Pikeman. It takes me back seeing Slavs going for Scorpion Knight, guys, because back in, like, 2017, 2018, Slavs were seen as one of the best civilizations on open maps. Oh, how times have changed. But yeah, they were in insanely good back then. Uh, to the point where their farms were nerfed, by the way. So I think it was 12% on their farm, or 15% in their farms, and it got taken to 12 but it's a different era now, right? We have all these other really strong civilizations, so I personally would like to see Slavs get that back. Uh, I still don't think they'd be like in the top ten, but I think it'd be, it'd be, it'd be good. But like, of course, the knights, of course, didn't come in because of the farms. It came in because of the fish and how Gabby played it there. I don't know. The Rams could slowly take out the TCs. Still feels like Gabby's like I have the lead. Not sure if I can really finish this guy off just just yet i personally would have preferred to see mangonel i think mangonel would have taken out tcs and also helped against army and now we're gonna see bro go for his own mangonel but you know like if you dive here for your gabby there's pikemen and there's monks in there that are gonna convert your units so that's probably the reason why she's not doing it also she's also adding farms good stuff Ethiopians could use a tiny boost. Um, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think Ethiopians are actually in a good spot balance-wise. Like, they are picked and played in tourneys. They're not picked and played all the time. Like, you know, some other civilizations are, but they're top tier in team games. I think they could be really good in, like, 1v1 closed maps or really good in 1v1 open maps. Um... I think they're underwhelming in tourneys because players, because of the tourneys you're speaking of. Like, I, I don't know. It's it's tricky. I, I don't think they need a boost. I think Ethiopians are a balanced civilization in a slightly imbalanced world because of some recent expansion civilizations. But I don't think they need a buff. I think they're an example of a civilization that has great strengths and then some core weaknesses. And that's how most civs should be, in my opinion. Agree or disagree with that statement. Not the Ethiopian thing, but civilizations with great strengths, nice identity, but also have some core weaknesses. Do you agree that that's how majority of civilization should be? I, I think that's what all what balance for civilization should always achieve. I don't think it's good for the game to have civilizations that can deal with everything all the time, which is the case with some civilizations in the game. Old and new, to be completely honest with you. But um, but yeah, GG. I do agree that some new civs are tossing the balance off. That, and then, you know, it depends on the map too, right? Like Chinese have always been super strong on Arabia. Aztecs, Mayans have always been really strong. But yeah, balance-wise, I think Ethiopians are actually uh, an example of a good balanced civilization. But a well-balanced civilization with, with solid strengths and enough weaknesses... Might not be in the top 10 these days.